Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's part 3 of the Keithley 2001 7.5 digit multimeter repair. I'll link parts 1 and part 2 down below. If you haven't seen them, they're well worth taking a look before you have a look at part 3. So at the end of part 2, I managed to get, or at least I think I'm getting, the digital board up and running. I think the main processor is actually running now. Uh, you did see me in part 2 change out quite a number of ICs, fix the high voltage board. Uh, we did quite a lot, even burning new proms for the actual firmware for it. So, so a lot of repairs were actually done to the hardware of the digital board. And then we went on to connect up the, the display board. Uh, but I was getting nothing on the display, maybe apart from some dashed lines, etc., on the display. So I came to the conclusion that the main CPU, the microcontroller on the display board, is actually gone as well. It does actually share the 5 volt supply with the main digital board, which is a supply that I think went absolutely haywire and destroyed a lot of the IC. So it's not out with it that the main MCU, the microcontroller here, is probably damaged as well. So in this video I'm going to try and carry on with the display board repair. I really want to get this up and running without the analog board etc and none of the other hardware connected. Uh, I think the analog board's probably got problems as well so I'll have to treat that kind of separately. At the moment I just want to get the digital board and the display up and running which I think should be possible with the connections that I've got here. However, like I said, I think the MCU and the display board's gone, it's, there's no activity on it whatsoever, it's got its reset, it's got its clock, it's just doing absolutely nothing. We did scope it, but nothing happening. And I can't find the firmware for it anywhere on the net, so I was kind of stuck at that moment in time. However, I have got a very, very good way forward. Let me just pan the camera up and you can have a look. That's another faulty Keithley 2001 seven and a half digit multimeter. Now I didn't buy this, I didn't get it off of eBay or nothing like that. A subscriber who was watching the part one, part two, very, very kindly donated it to the channel from overseas and uh, it's intact, it's got all the boards here, you can see that it's hanging apart really, it's been stripped down, somebody was trying to repair it and then just boxed up very quickly and shipped off to me. So let's take a look at that and see what we've got. So first things first, it does actually have quite a nice front panel on it, certainly the uh, Perspex, the smoke screen here is in much much better condition than my own one so perhaps we'll use this entire front panel it doesn't look to be scuffed it needs a bit of a clean but otherwise it looks quite good and here's the analog board the top side of the board and you can see that yes it's been disconnected uh, certainly the boards have been removed all these connections here and I can see straight away that uh, somebody has removed the electrolytic capacitors from the main analog board that I can see and I was actually made aware of that by the owner, uh, the person that sended me this. So I think it's probably had some leaky caps and spread onto the board and that's probably the fault that uh, the previous owner or owners were trying to repair. Over on the digital side, on the other side, straight away I can see that this is actually the older version of the digital board. The layout is quite a bit different to my board here, especially around the CPU and the RAM and the ROM etc. Um, the extremes of the board, this side here and this side here look very much the same, but certainly in the middle here it's, it is different. And I think this is like the V1 version of the board compared to the V2 that I've got. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip it down. Let's get the boards out of the frame uh, and include in the display board and uh, we'll see what we've got and hopefully I should be able to try this display board on my digital board and let's see if we can't get something up and running there. Hopefully there's no problem with this display board. 
So there's the digital board out and it looks in quite good condition. Certainly no evidence of any soldering or any parts blowing or anything like that. So whether this actual digital board works, who knows? And I have also taken off the conductive cover for the analog board. You can see the A to D board there. And yes, you can see there's some of the electrolytics have been removed and there's quite some staining and marking on the board there, probably where the caps leaked uh, down onto the PCB and probably done some damage. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six caps there that have been removed. These two haven't been removed or perhaps they've been changed out already, not sure. And in and around this opto isolator here, let's zoom in on that. So this is the main power switch here and you've got the uh, secondaries connecting here and you can see yes there's quite a lot of uh, uh, black residue over some of those opto isolators and some of the other components like transistors down here and some of the ICs and I think this section over here deals with the pre-regulator um, so I suspect that's damage to some of those components, possibly when the pre-regulator has just gone a little haywire. Um, so yeah, and when this section goes, you can basically destroy the rest of the board. So yeah, it doesn't look like there's much I can salvage out of this corner of the board anyway. Okay, so on with the repair. So I'm taking a look now at the display board and comparing it to my original and yeah, this one here is quite a bit older. It's dated 1991 compared to 2000 on my board. So yeah, like nine years of a difference between the two boards. However, the components look almost exactly in the same place. And uh, importantly, the microcontroller here, um, my original's an A02 version, this one's an A01, so perhaps there's been a slight firmware update to uh, this one here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip this one down, let's get it out of its front panel and let's check it out before I actually plug it into my digital board. So that's the retaining clip removed, I've just got to there we go and yes and the VFD looks nicely intact no breakages yeah and the front panel I don't think this was ever taken apart the clip there was no markings on it where it had been prized off so I think this uh, display board's never been parted from its front panel. Well, let's do a little bit of a direct comparison here. So this is C901 which is incoming 5 volt supply and on the new board 18.3 meg and on my original 0.7k. Wow that's a huge difference. And what about the 60 volt supply? Well, I know that C904 here is across the 60 volt supply. So 0.8 there versus 1.2 meg on my original. So quite a difference there in the other direction. So certainly no dead shorts. So I think I'm about ready to try this board on my original digital board. Okay, let's go for a power up off camera here. And 5 volts is on. Yes! Model 2001 Rev B17, which is exactly what I installed. Error code 511 GPIB address lost. My CPU's up and running. Perfect. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I do actually want to fit in the Tecmos IC that I removed from this socket here. I don't know if this chip's working, but what I want, what I want to do is actually just see if it actually powers up and the current doesn't go sky high. I just make sure I can power up. I do have uh, probably one that I can rob off of this digital board here. This is actually an EEPROM, so I think this is a microcontroller if I remember rightly in its own right, so it's got code in it. Um, it's not 
code that's transferred from the main CPU. I think it's actually burned with code directly itself. So whether this one's been wiped by that 5 volt supply, I don't know. I think it probably has. So um, yeah, worst comes to the worst. I'll remove this one from the board and we'll use it. And probably the same with the GPIB controller IC. That's just a standard IC and I should be able to use it directly. So let me go and fit this Tecmos and we'll try another power up. Well, that was a fail. It went straight to my 600 milliamp limit there. So that IC is probably gone. So I'll remove the other one from the other board. And there we go, that's the IC removed. And whilst I was at it, I just desoldered the uh, GPIB controller IC as well. So next thing to do is to clean up the pins in this one here, because it's going into a socket now. And uh, I'll just leave the GPIB controller IC for the time being, but it's there if I need it. Okay, that's IC cleaned up, so let me just pop it into its socket. way around. There we go. Not exactly a tight fit, might have to play with the legs a little. And let's power that up and see what sort of con consumption I'm getting now. Just under the 600 and no more. Okay we'll call that a win for the moment. I think next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to the GPIB controller IC. But uh, first of all, let's take a look and see if we're getting an, a GPIB address on the actual display. So, sorry I can't turn this round, but it's the best I can do at the moment. Let me just power it up again. Address 16. But then it disappears, it comes up GPIB address lost. Well, I've just scanned uh, GPIB network using my little uh, remote 82357B and it's not finding it. And I did confirm that I was able to find some of my other devices and uh, no problem. So I don't think GPIB is working. Now, of course, it could be the buffer ICs here or it could actually be the GPIB controller. Um, so what I think I will do is I'll try replacing the controller first. Well, that's the GPIB controller IC removed from the donor board and I've fitted a socket to my digital board here. I had to file down the side of the socket, the new one, just for the tiniest of fractions. Not even half a pad of the ICs just to move the socket just that way, just a very, very slightly. So I've done that and it's soldered up in place. I've got the new controller chip, which I can go ahead and fit now. Now the reason I think it's the controller chip is if it was the buffer chips, I didn't think I'd be getting that GPIB interface address lost on the display. I think it would be more likely to be to a controller failure. So we'll try this anyway and see what happens. No, and I'm still getting nothing on the PC, so I'm not really sure what's going on. It could be because I've not got the rest of the boards hooked up or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, don't know whether just to leave it as it is at the moment until I get everything up and running. I mean if it is one of the interface chips here I should manage to change that out even when the board's assembled into the chassis later on down the line. Just ignore it for the time being. Okay the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually remove this E squared prom here which stores the calibration data. It's a 24C164. It's a two wire EE prom. And I'm going to stick it in a socket. I mean, this would have been subjected to the same uh, 5 volt supply that destroyed everything else. So there's probably a good chance it's gone as well. But it means if I remove it from the board, I can actually plug it into my programmer and actually read it back and see if I'm getting anything. Okay, so I removed the 24C164 E squared prom and stuck it in my datum in 40 and it can't be read. So the uh, IC's knackered. So I've gone and fitted a brand new blank one 
and I have powered up and everything's just the same calibration lost not a surprise the EE proms empty now I could go and pull the chip from this board and read the contents out on it and uh, program that blank so I think I will go ahead and do that there would be no harm in doing that the calibration data in here won't be valid of course for this board it's a completely different analog board that we're going to be using but at least we'll have some data of some sort in there assuming the layout of that uh, data is the same for this digital board and uh, the firmware version that's fitted to this board and this one here I think this one here has got A06 fitted to it firmware for the main uh, CPU whereas the new one of course I programmed B17 so whether that calibration data is entirely this compatible I'm not sure but there's no harm in doing it I've got a socket in place anyway on the chip so it's easily removed and replaced with a new blank one or whatever so let me go ahead and remove this chip from this board and read it into my programmer okay that's a 24C16 removed from the donor board and I've programmed this new 24C164 with the same data so let's plug it into the board there we go I'm just going to power up and see what the display has got to say for itself in terms of calibration data uh, still got data calibration lost so I'm not really sure whether that really means anything well there's a digital board perhaps ready uh, not too sure I can do too much more to it. I have fitted two brand new 5 volt regulators, the same model that was fitted previously, and that was the LM2940 uh, CT 5s, they're positive 5 volt regulators. Now, some of these 5 volt regulators, maybe especially the 2940s, if you don't have enough capacitance on the output, the output can go haywire it can go up way eight nine volts so just temporarily I've fitted a capacitor on the output of the regulator just to make sure that I do uh, have enough capacitance there I think this tantalum here is the one that's on the output and I believe that's a 22 microfarad so I have replaced that anyway and I have powered up the board I've put uh, 8 volts across this large electrolytic which is basically the output from the bridge rectifier and I am getting 5 volts across the board so quite happy with that I don't think there's anything else that needs looked at this 5 volt regulator here I have changed it although the previous one was okay and that supplies power to this little circuit down here so I've not needed to change anything there because I think that 5 volt was okay so the only thing that I've got some slight doubt over is the GPIB. Not too sure what's going on there, but I'll, at least I can wait until the whole thing's back together. And if I've still got GPIB problems uh, beyond that, then I'll start playing about with uh, replacing the buffer ICs and maybe the controller as well, who knows. And there is actually a 74LS02 here as well. So it could be gone, but it's not drawn any high currents or anything like that. So uh, I'm quite happy to leave it as it is at the moment. So I think I can get on and look at the analog board now. But that's going to be for the next video. But don't worry, I'm going on to it straight away. And I'll be working on it in the next couple of days. So hopefully... I've got something else to show you. Uh, this is Thursday, so hopefully by the weekend, by Sunday, I might have some more news. Thanks for watching.